Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our bi-weekly class on economic events of the upcoming week or short-term period. Now, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, ETX is a regulated provider, so I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get that out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information that is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETX Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors, and we do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned throughout are for educational purposes only. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time and not a depositor with ETX or investor with ETX, we are a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, and we are also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. We offer many ways to trade on our platform. For newbies or somebody who's looking for additional ways to add to the portfolio, we have our ETX binary, which is a good way to learn how the markets are working. Or if you need to hedge one of your other trades, you can use the, uh, our binary platform for that. We also have our Web Trader, our ETX Trader Pro, which is one of the best ways to trade. Nothing to be downloaded. Everything's right there for you, easy to use. And you have a full line of market type orders you can execute. You have trailing stops, alerts, and fully customizable charts. Then for those of you who want to move up to the higher level, more advanced level of trading, we have the ETX MT4 platform, which will also allow you to integrate expert advisors. If you don't know how to do that, you should check with our or come to our MT4 platform. You can also use our very advanced charts on there, and you can use MT4 to automate your trading and almost in your own build a online robotic trading system. All done with the ETX MT4 platform. Now, the main event we have leading up this week is, of course, if you're in the UK, you know exactly what it is. It's the UK elections, which kind of were a shoo-in for Theresa May, and the pound and the FTSE have been paying, were paying little attention to it till last week. And one poll from YouGov came out showing that she was not going to capture any new seats and might lose a few seats. She'd still win, but not as strong as expected. But the YouGov polls have been so inaccurate over the past year that it, it's like... You know, YouGov was so bad over Brexit that, it, you know, a lot of people are paying no attention. And the pound dipped down a little bit last week with the possibility because everybody's hoping that Theresa May um, gets this strong shoe-in, or this strong vote, that she has a strong negotiating point at the, hold on one second, please. So she has a strong negotiating point at the Brexit uh, meetings uh, moving forward. But then, of course, two weeks ago, or last week, um, almost two weeks ago, we had this little mess in Manchester, this horrible mess in Manchester, um, which put security as the prime interest in everybody's minds. Remember, now, Theresa May did not go to the debate. Now we have everybody at edge. And then, of course, this weekend, we just had this ter ter terrorist attack in London, which has both of the, all the politicians suspending their campaigning and dealing with uh, London. But there's a, a couple ifs that are going to affect the market. Number one, Will there be a big turnout in the polls, or are a lot of people going to be freaky this week at week and stay away from busy places? That's number one. So you could have a very small turnout, or will this push Theresa May over the edge because she seems to be very hard on terrorism and, and, and starting or knows how to, to deal with it? So we, we don't know what the market reaction for the FTSE is going to be on Monday, but it could take a serious hit. Uh, over this weekend's mess, along with the pound. 
So we have to keep an eye on what is going on. But there's nothing really that's predictable at this moment. Now, you can be assured that if, when the results come in, if May want a, a resounding uh, outcome, a strong, very strong win, that you should see the pound and the FTSE rally right after that morning, the next morning. Or if she wins but doesn't win as a strong lead as she expected, we might see the FTSE and the pound, especially the pound, dip down a little bit. Because again, it, it weighs on her abilities to go into these strong negotiations very strong. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens on the 8th and see what's going on. As you see, polling stations close at 10 p.m. in the UK, and we should see a clear result about 3 a.m. Exit polls aren't going to be that important because we need to see if it's a landslide. If it's a landslide, we'll know by midnight. But it won't affect the markets till the next morning when they open. So... As the elections draw closer in the next couple of days, will be a little bit hectic out there. If you're in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, or Wales, and don't vote, don't complain. I'm tired of people complaining about Brexit, and they're upset that the surprise happened, and now they're all complaining when they should have gone out and voted in the first place. So again, the basic question remains that as to whether these elections will give May the room to make a U-turn from the hardline position she has been taking toward Brexit negotiation up until now. Repeatedly, May has insisted that any deal with Europe must satisfy two basic UK demands. The biggest one is the freedom of movement and protection of the borders and security. And after this week, uh, this is going to be a hardcore event. Now, the other interesting thing we have this week, which is not an economic event, but could be a event that weighs on the dollar and the U.S. and the, and the U.S. markets, and this is the um, testimony from former FBI Director James Comey. Now, he is... He is um, scheduled to testify on the 8th. Now, there is a way that Donald Trump can stop his testimony. But that would make Trump look very, very guilty. We don't know what he's going to say. If, he, if Trump stops him from testifying we could see a very negative effect on the dollar and the U.S. markets. Um, and, or if he testifies and his testimony shows some coercion from Trump in, you know, and, and some, some things that we, you know, we're, we're expecting or some collusion with Moscow, that could have an effect on the dollar and gold. So we don't really know. The latest development comes from a source from sources that tell CNN that fired FBI Director James Coney plans to testify publicly in the Senate to confirm bombshell accusations that President Trump pressured him to end his investigation into a top Trump aides to Russia. Investors are on edge after the turmoil from, over former FBI James' claims that Donald Trump sent, which sent stocks spiraling to their biggest loss in months. The big question for the financial markets is, how bad could it get? Some forecasters think that in the short term, at least, the worst could be a correction where the markets fall by 10 to 15 percent. More optimistic analysts expect a stretch of discomfort before Wall Street stages a recovery. Because remember, the, the markets all rallied very, very hard after Trump's election and his promises of all this economic recovery, all these economic plans, this tax plan, none, none of which he has been able to get successfully moving forward. Health care fell, by the way. He, um, his uh, Muslim ban or his immigration ban has fallen, by the way. Now, this week, um, 
they've asked the Supreme Court to hear this, and the Supreme Court will not make a decision on the case. They will make a decision on, as to when and how soon they will hear that. So we could hear that we'll hear about they should make a decision this week. But the fact is the markets are getting a little worried that Trump is not going to be able to deliver any of the promises he made. And he's finding that ma making these deliveries or promises and getting them delivered is a lot different. And so w right now we see the VIX climbing back again. That's the fear factor. And we can see that it's popped back up since Comey was fired. And it's been the talk of ever since. So we have that, and then, of course, we have North Korea. Um, so we have a lot of stuff going on in U.S. politics, in the U.S. market, and all on Trump's shoulders, and he doesn't seem to be handling any of it too well. So the markets are going to react to this. Now, moving into this week, we see the euro easing down a little bit. Oh, the other reason why that might ease back down is worries out of the U.K., but what else do we have? We have another major event this week. We have the ECB meeting on Thursday. So we're going to see the euro stay at 112, but we're still fall, expecting it to fall down to 110.38 as the dollar recovers towards the end of this month. Over the quarter, we expect the, the, the euro to average out about 109. The pound, which is trading about 128.24, we might see it fall farther this month, and we're expecting it down to go as low as 126.96 and stay around that range over the next end of the quarter. Um, we might be starting to see some bad economic numbers out of the, the UK. And again, um, unless we see some something out of Theresa May to handle this, this terrorism issue, uh, it's going to weigh on the pound. Uh, the Japanese yen were expected to ease back up to 113, and the Euro JPY back to the 122.34 level, and also uh, the the Australian dollar to drop as one as far as 0.7376. But it's more or less on the U.S. dollar regaining some of its losses. The U.S. dollar taking a big hit over the last week or two, and we have the big Fed meeting next week. We are expecting the Fed still to continue moving ahead and raising rates, which should help the dollar climb back off of its recent lows. So it could be an interesting time for us. Now, we have a very busy calendar this week, lots of secondary events. On Monday alone, you're looking at the calendar for Monday, and these are all secondary events. Um, they're not going to be really tradable, um, but they should have a longer-term effect on the individual currencies. Tuesday, we get into an interesting set of information. If you trade the Aussie, we have the rate decision out of Australia. And then if you could trade the Canadian dollar, we're going to see the IVPMI report. Then on Wednesday, we have Australian GDP, and we also have European GDP. We're going to keep a close eye on that. If we see domestic product bouncing back up, um, it might support the euro a little bit. Then on Thursday, um, we have the election results, okay, um, which we will, should get by the polls will close at 10 by midnight. And we also have the ECB meeting. So it's going to be a crazy little day. So we have the ECB meeting with the monetary policy statement and a Mario Draghi press conference. And we have no idea what Mr. Draghi is going to say or do. Now, we also have, earlier in the day, we have some numbers out of China. We have trade balance and imports and exports that could affect the markets also. So Thursday is going to be an interesting day. We're going to go over these events a little bit in detail in a second. And then Friday, again, we have inflation out of China, which could have a big effect on the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. We have current account and imports and exports out of the Eurozone which we want to look at very closely. We're going to pay bigger attention to the German numbers. Then we have some UK data. So coming right on the back of the election, we have manufacturing PMI, we have uh, inflation, and we have industrial PMI. So we have a massive week ahead for Europe, and in particular the UK, given Monday's services PMI, and, of course, Thursday's general election. 
the polls have been narrowing, and anything more than a Tory majority would be a major curveball to the financial markets. Thursday also sees the European Central Bank providing their latest rate decision. Now, they're not likely to change anything, but it's going to be Mario Draghi's press conference that is going to be the prime well, a volatility maker. We're going to listen very closely to what he has to say about tapering back this quantitative easing in the bond buying. He's got, they've got to start cutting it back. And if he says anything about when or give us some definitive, or even that he's going to cut back his monthly purchases, it might have an effect on the, the euro. So on the top tier events for the week, we have the RBA rate decision on Tuesday, GDP at the Eurozone on Wednesday. We have Thursday, the elections and the ECB meeting. And then on Friday, we have consumer inflation and unemployment out of Canada. Okay. That's the big events for the week. That's not paying any attention to what the craziness is going on in the U.S., like I said, with the Comey investigation uh, or Comey testimony, as well as stress out of North Korea. And we we'll also have to factor out of here the headlines from the terrorism in the UK. Now, also on the earnings season side, it's very, very, very quiet this week. We have a lot of airlines uh, releasing data, but outside the airline industry, nothing. Um, but we're going to keep an eye on British Airways after their big IT failure this weekend. They're going to be, or last weekend, they're going to be all over the press and their stocks going to be very low anyway. So we don't have much going on in the way of uh, corporate earnings. Now, remember, the last week, the U.S. dollar was on its back foot throughout the week as data remained mixed and speculation about the Fed decision mounts. A rate decision in Australia, the ECB's critical decision, and the U.K. elections stand out in the first full week of June. Now, Fed members sent mis mixed messages last week. So the Fed meeting is next week. So it is weighed on the dollar pretty much this week. They're going to go into their blackout period, and we shouldn't hear much until we get ready for the next week's decision. It seems like they've trapped in the expectations they created for a June hike, and they may have what's called a dovish hike, a small hike without any real conviction, but it's still a hike. Their favorite inflation figure continued falling. In the UK, some opinion polls showed a tightening of the race, causing the pound to slide. It was mostly the YouGov poll. But not all polls are created equal, and the counts, and only the counts of the votes coming this week. And like I said, after Brexit, I wouldn't rely on any of the UK polls because they weren't even right close or anything else. Now, reports about an upgrade to the ECB's assessment helped the euro winning over weaker inflation. Commodity currencies resumed their fall as Chinese PMI slipped uh, to, to con contraction territory and oil prices are grinding lower. So we're going to be paying a lot of attention this week to Chinese data to see if it offsets the PMI, the Purchasing Manager's Index, that was, fell lower than it was last week. So on Monday, the event that might cause some volatility in the markets outside of the headlines is the UK PMI. Uh, it might affect the pound and the FTSE. It's expected to fall to 55 from 55.8. Oh, remember, over 50, 50 is not is acceptable, but even a decline or missing expectation could upset the markets a little bit. Then on Monday afternoon, we get U.S. I, uh, US ISM non-manufacturing PMI. It's not a critically important number, but we'd like to see some numbers going up in the U.S., um, so we, we want to keep an eye on it. Now, it usually helps us give a look at what's happening to the non-farm payroll job, but that came out this past Friday, uh, very, very early in the month, because it was only the second, it was the second of June, I think it was. And it usually, they usually put it off until the next Friday. But last week, we had a fairly disappointing number, 138 in the U.S. against, uh, I think, expectation 185, although unemployment fell to 4.3%. So it was a, a kind of a mixed report. Then again, Tuesday, we have the RBA uh, rate decision. We're expecting them to hold fire at 1.5%. Anything else besides that or anything containing in the statement could cause a jump in the, pound, the Australian dollar. 
Um, it might be an interesting tr uh, cross trade this week, the Australia dollar against the pound. So it could give you an interesting trade. So we have the Australian rate decision. The RBA changed, uh, last changed interest rates in August, but has adopted a neutral stance in that, since then. We're not expecting any, tra any change. But again, worries about China will weigh on the outlook from the bank. And in the past, the RB took advantage of downfalls in the exchange rate to push the currency even lower. When they hit the, uh, will they hit the Australian dollar lower again? That means by dropping rates, but they're not going to drop rates. But, um, you know, because China, uh, Australia's main trading partner is its exports to China. So they, need, they like to keep their, their currency as low as possible for export value and make them competitive. Then on Wednesday, we have Australian GDP and U.S. crude oil inventories. Um, the Australian uh, GDP is not expected to do anything. Um, there might be some fluctuations, but, but nothing of major consequence. It's not going to give you a trading possibility outside the RBA the day before. Now, crude oil inventory, where crude oil has gotten very, very low price-wise again. Um, the OPEC meeting did nothing to support the oil prices, even though they said they'd continue their reduction. And the U.S. shale manufacturers are, have turned on the tap the minute the $50 rate was hit and have been pushing oil out and flooding the markets. So um, you might get some fluctuation, but not anything that's probably going to be tradable. Then on Thursday, we start the day out again with Australia. And we have the Australian trade balance. That's going to give you a good chance to trade Asian indices as well as the Australian dollar. A copper will be a big number there. And FTSE mining stocks if you're trading on the FTSE. But remember, it's going to be hard to trade anything on the FTSE on Thursday with the election results coming out. Then we also have the Chinese trade balance. That's going to affect any of the crosses against the, the Chinese yuan, but it has a big effect on all the Asian indices and a big effect on the Australian dollar. 12.45 on Thursday, we have the ECB rate decision, and they're going to hold rates. I don't think there's anybody thinking any otherwise. Rates are at zero and a minus deposit rate of minus 0.4%. It is the press conference and the statement, and any mention, like I said before, of tapering. Any mention of tapering should send the euro straight up. So if you're watching and listening and you want a good position, if Drake says a single word about tapering or you want to might want to take a position ahead of time, depending on what you think he might say, it'll support the euro as well as the DAX, the CAC, um, you know, and the major exchanges. Um, so you might want to gamble ahead of time or take a position ahead of time um, and see if he's going to send the euro up. And it doubt very much will send the euro down, even if he says nothing about tapering. And then, of course, we have the UK elections. Okay. You figure out what you want to do, because I have no idea what to do with the UK elections until after the results are out. So Friday morning, I know what I might want to do, but Thursday, I wouldn't. So remember, the Brits are going to the polls for less than a year after the EU referendum, after Theresa, Theresa May called a snap election. At first, it seemed that her Conservative Party is set for a landslide victory. A wide majority in Parliament would help her move to a soft Brexit, as she wouldn't have to worry about the hardline Brexiteers. Since the announcement, her party is ceding ground to the opposition Labour Party. She's going to be forced to take a very hard line of stance on security and borders. Okay, period. And there's going to be no opening for her there. A small majority for May would be slightly disappointing, while a hung parliament, as the suggested poll, and that's the YouGov poll, could hit the pound quite hard. Polls have a big impact on the pound. They vary quite a bit. Those showing a big victory from May's Tories rely on high turnout of older people. Okay. This is going to be the question, turnout. Will they stay home after this terror event just because they don't want to be out in public or, or busy places? Okay. 
Now, during the day, we will get turnout numbers. A low turnout will help the pound, and a higher one will keep it under pressure. Initial exit polls are due at about 2,100. Um, we'll see what happens. Then remember, we have the ECB rate decision, which we keep harping on. And given the recent improvement in the economy and expectation for higher inflation, the ECB might provide an upgraded outlook. Again, we have to see how positive Mario Draghi is. Uh, setting the scene for an announcement about tapering QE in September. Note that this is an important ECB meeting where they also release new forecasts for growth and inflation. Any jump in inflation, any, any seeing of inflation moving back towards this hopeful 2% rate will push the euro because that means he will definitely start to paper. So keep your eye there and listen very closely. Look at their releases, their forecasts. Now remember, the statement from the committee comes out first and then Draghi takes the stage 45 minutes later. So there are two completely separate opportunities there to um, take a bite. Then on Friday, at early in the morning, we had Chinese inflation. Big number, very important number. It's going to have a, an effect across the markets if, it's, if it misses or it's higher than expected. Um, the Australian dollar and the Asian indices are your choices to trade. Then we get UK manufacturing and, and industrial production. Again, in my, I don't know how tradable it's going to be. It's going to come out early in the morning. The markets are just going to be reacting to the election. I don't think anybody's going to pay any attention to this. And then late in the day, we have the Canadian jobs that are you trade the Canadian dollar. Um, I don't think it's going to cause any volatility there. So this time Canada's job report gets the full stage. It's the NSP. They, it usually comes out simultaneous with the U.S. numbers. But the U.S. numbers came out very early. So it's going to be the only thing in the, um, the event calendar on late on Friday. Uh, in April, the Canadian economy gained only 3.2 thousand jobs. And the unemployment rate stood at 6.5%. And that is it for this coming week. So we have a lot of events that could shape the market for us. Um, if I, like I said, if I was watching anything, I would be watching Australia and Chinese data. If you want to look for good trades ahead of time, um, the ECB meeting is going to be crucial. Uh, and but you know if you're out of the UK, every all the headlines are going to be looking at dealing with the terror and dealing with the uh, the elections, and then the US. We're going to take a close look this week on the continuing geopolitical turmoil with North Korea, which could continue to weigh on the dollar, and we're going to keep a listen to Mr. Trump. He really pissed off you know. The Brits this week, this weekend, um, he, it's like he declared full hardcore war on the, on the mayor of London uh, with his tweets overnight. So we're going to be listening very, very closely to the testimony of James Comey or the headlines because tomorrow we will probably hear or Tuesday whether Trump is going to elect to use his presidential status to stop Mr. Comey from testifying. And that would cause a big ruckus in the U.S. So, the, and that will, of course, weigh on the stock markets and on the, um, the dollar. Um, Mr. Comey's testimony could have a very sharp effect on the stock markets also. So we've got to listen. To, we've got to separate whether Trump did something or Comey just didn't like Trump or Comey's still mad at getting fired. Um, so th this is going to be an interesting week. And again, if the, the uh, Supreme Court decides that it will hear an accelerated you know, um, case on the U.S. Uh, ex, um, immigration ban. So we've got a lot of things going on this week, but it's mostly headline type data. So it could cause some good volatility, give you some good trading opportunities. If you sit down and figure out where these assets might want to go, don't get involved in the high volatility of the stuff. You, you, you'll get hurt. But if you think how it's going to have an effect on the dollar in a longer term or in the euro in a, you know, a couple day term is in a couple hour term, um, it, it could be some major opportunities here for you. Um, so again, let's go over day by day again. Monday, UK 
PMI, nothing really tradable. Monday we're going to be listening for stuff from May, response to terror, and to Trump and the test, you know, the the possibility of blocking it. Tuesday we have the RBA in the morning. We're getting closer to elections, but I think they all said they're going to stop campaigning. I don't know for how long they said to do that. We're going to watch the response to the terrorism. Hopefully there won't be any other you know, acts coming up to the election. Wednesday, we just have, again, Australian GDP and crude oil inventories. Thursday is the busy day. We have the UK election going on all day. We have the Australian trade balance in the morning. Chinese trade balance, big effect on the markets. Same thing the day after when we have Chinese, or the day before when we have Chinese inflation. And we have the ECB. The ECB should give you a lot of trading events during the day, as well as the headlines on the elections. And then on Friday, we're going to have the election results in the morning, Chinese inflation, um, and the Canadian jobs report. And that is it for the week. So thank you very much. I don't know what I'm teaching on Wednesday. I, oh, we have the we have a first of two week class on Japanese candlesticks. So join us on Wednesday for our class on Japanese candlesticks. It's the first of the two week course, and hopefully we'll see you then. Have a very very nice weekend. Thank you for being part of the ETX family, and thank you for listening to me today. Talk to you all again real soon, and best wishes trading this week. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Bye now.